Hello, we're going to talk about long tail search today. Now, slight change of format if you're used to watching my video blogs. Um, they're a little bit more produced than this is and the next three are going to be somewhat in this format. Uh, Liana who normally produces my videos is in New York. Talon who's being trained is already becoming great but he's got a lot on his plate so I'm going to make the format quite simple. Also I'm traveling so I need to do them remotely anyway. So slightly different format but I'm going to dive into some topics that lend themselves to this on-screen capture format. I'll get off your screen in a second, but I thought I'd show you my nice, nice garden. Um, but I want to talk about long tail search. Let me explain why that's worth understanding and mastering. A significant proportion, and I'll show you some scary numbers in a moment, but a significant proportion of the search traffic that you can optimize for are for phrases that you wouldn't think to optimize for and on pages that you wouldn't bother to optimize. So there's a lot of untapped gold in search engine optimization. It's not just about your hero pages. That's why, let's dive into a little bit of the how, but I want to show you something of a math marketing site to give you a sense of why this is even worth bothering about. There's our traffic uh, over the last few years, um, showing you quite a bit of confidential information here, so don't, don't tell anyone. Um, we've been averaging around 5,000 visits a month order of magnitude. Now it's steadily growing, had a nice few months, but it's generally been steadily growing. Now, what's key about that? Let's take a look at the Google search traffic over that same period. And you can see that the Google search traffic has been, this is search of course, but specifically on Google, has been growing fairly steadily from around 2,000 a month to around 4,000 a month. Now, clearly, we're really happy with that. Where has that come from? It's a significant number of phrases, but we get about a third of our traffic um, overall goes to hero pages, the home page and a couple of key pages on the website. The other two thirds comes from blogs and other pages. It's going to get more important than that still though. That's not the, I haven't built the case yet. Bear with me. Now if we take a look at Google Analytics again, um, we can see in terms of number of clicks that there are a couple of misspellings of our name plus one key phrase that have between them generated some traffic. But then we start to get into phrases that we wouldn't have definitely and deliberately optimized for. What's going on with that? Long tail, the term I used before, long tail search. Long tail doesn't refer to um, uh, long phrases. Now, if you look at our um, uh, phrases that we get traffic for, the average is 3.2 words. The long tail doesn't refer to how long the phrases are. It refers to the fact that after you get past your first few, typically around 10 phrases that you get traffic for, how much of your traffic do you get from the rest, from the long tail of the curve? Now, for us, let me show you something here. It's significant. If we look through the search traffic, and I'm now using Webmaster Tools because Analytics has not given us the data that we need, so I'm using a different tool also from Google Webmaster Tools. And if I start scrolling through the phrases that we've got traffic for just in the last month, the tail, as you can see, is very, very long. So frankly, it's now going to get silly, I'm going to go down to a thousand different phrases, back to the top. There are a thousand different phrases for which we've got search traffic just in the last month. That's the long tail. Let me give you some proportionality of that. If we look at our top 10 phrases, and then how much of our traffic comes from the rest, from the long tail. I can tell you exactly. It's 98% of our traffic, of our search traffic, comes from the long tail. That's why we need to learn how to master long tail optimization, not just key phrase optimization on your hero pages. So how do we typically go about search engine optimization? You get together and with your team and you think about what are the sort of phrases that 
we would expect people to use when they're looking for a company like us. And you might find that some phrases predominate in that inquiry. You identify hero pages, a small number of pages that you're going to carefully optimise for those phrases that are worth optimising for after you've done some competitive analysis. Now, I'm not pretending to be an SEO expert in this conversation. If you want to get some really good oil just on SEO, search engine optimization generally, go to Rand Fishkins, he's from Moz, uh, Rand Fishkins um, Whiteboard Friday, or more locally, um, Jim, um, Jim Stewart from Stewart Media does a great job locally on a weekly video blog that I'm a frequent listener to. Good day, Jim. Um, what I wanted to say is that that's the basic stuff. Let's get away from the basic stuff and I want to talk about the long tail. By the way, here's Whiteboard Friday. It's Moss Whiteboard Friday I mentioned before. Now let's go back to a tool I want to refer to called Hittail from a guy called Rob Whaling. Rob put uh, Hittail together for a couple of reasons. Firstly, when you look at Google Analytics, you don't get any search traffic anymore. They've, they've hidden it. Now, they're doing a few things. I looked at Analytics just before putting this together, and I saw some traffic um, from Analytics. So I'm, I'm a little confused as to what we get now. But uh, for a very long time, we've been getting depressingly little information from Google about the phrases used to reach our own websites. So we go to Webmaster Tools. But Webmaster Tools only stores it for a month. So what Hittail does is it goes to Google Webmaster Tools, grabs the latest um, search data, and it just keeps it. So through that you get a long history of data. And it compares that long history of data that people are using to actually get to your, to your site with volume trends and competitiveness and how well you're ranked. And it comes up with recommendations for phrases that from their algorithm they believe you've got a good chance of optimizing for because you've already got a certain amount of traffic or because you've got a certain amount of content, or it's not too competitive, or some combination of those factors. Great idea for generating suggestions. What, what phrases could we write about? Now, they're only going to be relevant to you because they're drawn from your own website. B2B marketing strategy, marketing training, sales and marketing alignment. Well, of course we're going to write about those topics. They're quite core to what we do. How did it work that out? By looking at our site and our search phrases. So, great way to get suggestions. Now you've got a long set of topics about which to blog. So what do you do? Well, you go and create great new content using the usual techniques. You, you make sure that the phrase is put into the level one heading. You make sure that the phrase is used fairly frequently in the content of the website, not to silly quantities, but frequently enough. Perhaps the URL is going to carry the name of the phrase. Perhaps the images are going to carry the names of the phrase as well. They're all the normal things for search engine optimization. But the point about today's show is that what we're optimizing for are phrases that we may not have thought to optimize for and not using our hero pages, but the blog. Now, that's long tail search. But because I'm math marketing, I want to go a little bit beyond that and talk about one more topic. Search, like any other tactic, needs to be in context. What are all the tactics you're going to use for every stage in the buyer's journey by marketing and by sales through to close deal? Now, until you know that, you can't really set about doing any tactic, let alone long tail search. So here's a question for you. How clear are you and your team about the objectives that you need sales and marketing to achieve for the next three years? How clear are each of the members of the team on the problems that you most want to trouble the market about? On which part of the market most has those problems? What a complete solution to those problems looks like? What velocity you need to generate for the next three years? And of course, as I referred to earlier, what tactics you're going to use in concert into an overall end-to-end -end campaign to generate that velocity? Now, if you don't have good enough answers to all of those questions, then maybe we can help. Take a look at the Contact Us section on our website. Let me just go to that now. 
So you can go just click on the contact page and you get our standard form fill, but you can also use the drop down and select a region that's closer to you and then select one of our funnel coaches in a region near you. Say hi to them and ask them how they can help you to generate that sort of clarity. Hope that helps. Have a great day.